Hey guys, this is Kenjido, and today I want to talk about contrast. And the reason I want to talk about contrast is because contrast is typically the quality of a photo that um, is associated with terms like an image that pops, or an image that has depth, or an image that is rich. Now, contrast can be applied at the raw level, or contrast can be applied later after you've brought it into PaintShop Pro. And PaintShop Pro has a whole lot of different contrast methods under their adjust menu. So we're going to go through all those and kind of explain how some of them are, how some of them are associated, how some of them are the same, um, and what benefits we get from using all the different types and why you'd want to use all the different types. So if we look at this image as an example, you can see that I've divided it and shown that the high contrast example of the image is on top, the low contrast is on the bottom. And you could describe the difference as, you know, again, more depth. You can you could even say that there's more detail visible with the higher contrast, especially the texture on the leaves. So generally speaking, higher contrast images are what people prefer. Uh, it also even seems to naturally bring out the saturation or the color, depending on what method of contrast you're applying. So we're going to cover the different kinds of contrast tools that PaintShop Pro offers, as well as touch on the idea of actually applying decontrasting or lowering contrast. So when you first take a look at the many different contrast tools available, you'll notice there's a lot, uh, and that some of them are grouped focused on histogram, some of them are related to HDR type effects like the local tone mapping, and there's even the really basic ones. So I'm going to go through these different tools and categorize them into three groups. Those three groups are base, shortcuts, and context. Base are what I would consider the tools that really can do almost anything contrast-wise. Uh, they're really the foundation for applying contrast over a single image. Shortcuts are really just uh, very quick and easy ways of doing very specific things with the base tools you'll see. So it, like a single slider that would do a lot of manipulations that you'd have to do otherwise using a base tool. And then contexts are just very specific kinds of contrast that are dependent on what the shape and nature of the image is that it'll apply the contrast differently than you would using the base tools. All right, so let's get into it. So let's start off with the base tools. And the first base tool that I'll cover is curves. And one of the most important things to really understand, to understand how all these contrast tools that in this family work, is the way that this graph works here. And so you can think of it as um, the bottom represents what the input color is, and the vertical line represents the output. So it's a mapping of drawing a line vertically and then seeing where that line uh, shows up equivalently on the output. So in this case, where the line is perfectly diagonal, perfectly straight, what you have is a direct mapping of for every value of gray, I'm going to get that same value of gray out. So this line right here represents no change. I'm there's the, the output or the input, the before, should look exactly the same as the output after. But what you'll notice as I start moving this thing, the output looks different. So by adjusting this curve, for example, now, I've said that middle gray, I want to be a lighter gray rather than the middle gray that it used to be when that line was straight. And so in, in effect, what I'm doing is now raising the brightness, which you can see, you can see for every pixel now over here, I'm, I'm, I'm ending up with a lighter pixel here. And the effect in this case actually is what's called a gamma correction when you're just adjusting the curve as a whole without any, without adding any extra bends or other points in it. Now, what you'll see is that there's some very fundamental things that can be done here that you're probably familiar with. Like for example, if I raise just this side, in effect what I'm doing is just increasing the brightness. So by moving this edge, I'm essentially doing the exact same thing as changing the brightness level on the brightness and contrast tool. In the same way, if I start sliding this guy across, 
this is essentially darkening an image. So I'm, I'm sliding all the way to the left, the brightness slider on the brightness and contrast tool. So by adjusting these two points, I'm affecting brightness. Now, if I change the slope, that's when I start affecting contrast. So if I slide this guy in, for example, and slide this guy in, this is essentially the same as moving the contrast level in the brightness and contrast tool to the right. And now in, this, in the opposite way, conversely, if I change this slope to be more shallow, this is the equivalent of moving the slider left on the contrast line of the brightness and contrast tool. So you can see that tool is fully represented by what can be done in curves just by moving the endpoints. Now, if I completely invert these, this line so that the slope is the opposite, now saying for every dark pixel, make it perfectly bright, and for every bright pixel, make it perfectly dark, I've in effect inverted the luminance of the image and therefore have done the same thing as the operation that's called the negative image in the image menu. Finally, if I were to take this, these points and make it perfectly vertical, this would in effect be almost or practically the same thing as applying the threshold. So the maximum amount of contrast so that essentially every pixel is either perfectly black and perfectly white. And if I were to move this slider around, this vertical line around, that would be the equivalent of moving the slider on the threshold tool. So going beyond just applying contrast, what's neat about curves is that you can also come up with a lot of really unique and interesting um, ways of just redoing a, a photo. Re not just contrast, but changing the color, changing the way that it looks. Um, I mean, this is a great place to experiment if you're wanting to try um, just to come up with completely new effects, new um new ways of viewing things new ways of of creating maybe abstract art there are some effects that come with paint shop pro and some of them may do some pretty strong manipulations with curves like you're seeing here uh, but the idea is that you're always going to get something that's surreal once you start inverting some part of that curve that reality is really based in you know the darks being mapped to darks and lights being mapped to lights but as soon as you start kind of bending that, that's when you start getting this sort of solarized or different uh, look. But, you know, you, you can really come up with very unique ways of adjusting this curve and really just seeing what you end up with. And essentially, this could be the foundation for a completely new style. So you can see how the curves tool, apart from the fact that you can do a lot of really unique things with it, and create very unique curve profiles or input output profiles that really this tool is a base tool because it can do so many other things or it can do the same operations as many of the other tools and that the other tools really just simplify some of these operations that the curve curves tool could do it's just a lot easier to move a single slider than constantly manipulate multiple points of a curve to get the same thing and You'd also have a much better, you'd have to have a much better understanding of how curves work to be able to achieve the same effects. The next base tool that I want to cover is the histogram adjustment tool. And what you'll notice about this tool is that it looks very similar. It's got a histogram, it's got a curve, uh, just like the curves tool, except the way that you uh, modify the light values and the way that you modify the curve is a little bit different. If you've used the levels tool, it's very similar as you can move sort of the sliders and adjust the histogram accordingly. You can see actually it shows when this button is checked how the new histogram is being modified. That by sliding the right caret or the white caret to the left that I'm in effect moving the distribution of pixels to the right into the lighter region and therefore you can see the image is a lot brighter as a, a product of that. So essentially this is giving you that control but what you'll notice is that there's still a lot of other things that can be done like brightness can be raised with this um, carrot here or the the light values can be brought down to darken with this carrot here. 
and the nature of the curve can be affected with this slider here. So in, in essence, you're really combining levels with a lot of other tools, but essentially it's very similar to curves in that you're just finding another method or using other shortcuts, if you will, to manipulate the curve in a certain way. And interestingly enough, you know, this sort of arbitrary group of settings that I've applied here has increased contrast like we've seen before, but desaturated the image so the colors don't seem to be as strong as they used to be. So you can see that there's a lot of control here and there's a lot of things that can go on that the principles are still the same that you have input and you have output, uh, but that the way that you control them is different and it's really just a product of what do you prefer as an artist or as a as a in your workflow what methods are easier for you so levels for example the levels tool is is this same capability but just focusing on these sliders and not doing anything with changing the shape of the curve or doing any offsets in terms of the max and uh, min output okay so let's talk about the histogram tools and to do that, um, I think to really understand what's happening, it's important to have the histogram up. And if you're not familiar with it, uh, the, the basics of it is just that you can think of this axis on the bottom representing the full spectrum of lightness to darkness values, the darker pixels being on the left and the bright pixels being on the right. So. What you see in this picture is that I have a lot of gray pixels in the middle and that I don't even have any pixels that are perfectly dark or perfectly white. And so if I just looked at a histogram, I would like that look like this. I would say, OK, I have a very low contrast image. And by comparison, if I were to let's close this, if I were to just simply apply levels. And there's my histogram again, and now I've kind of brought you know, these guys in, I've brought darks and lights all the way. And now if I look at that histogram again, you'll see now that I've got pixels all the way at the bottom and quite a few. And my pixels in the top end, the bright ones are now finally starting to stretch into that region. So let's now look at the actual histogram stretch tool first. So if we use the histogram stretch, what you'll notice is that it kind of brighten things, it kind of darken things a little bit. And if we look at the histogram now, whereas before we saw that it was kind of all bunched together in the middle, it's now been stretched out. As the name implies, it's really the goal of this tool is just a quick way of being able to expand your pixel coverage into the full dynamic range of the image. I don't know that this would be a one-step fix, but it would at least get you started if you really cared about trying to get the full dynamic range of your image represented. Now, if we use the histogram equalizer, what this is actually trying to do is take that full range or that limited range that we saw of the distribution of pixels and spread it out across. So not just stretch it and expand it into the deepest darks and the lightest lights, but actually redistribute the luminance so that it's about as even as possible across the image. Looking at it, it may give you an effect that you really like or one that you want to start out with and do some other adjustments and color manipulations with. Uh, once again, it's really just up to you um, if you like the effect and what part of your workflow you would want to incorporate it in. So we've talked about the base tools and we've even mapped some of the shortcuts to the capabilities in the base tools. And we've touched on the other shortcut tools that are related to the histogram. So now what remains is the last two tools that are context-based. So they really can't be achieved by the base tools or some you know, very complex manipulation because these tools apply contrast in such a way that's unique to what's in the actual image. So to start off with, let's take a look at the fill, light, and clarity. Now, the, the fill light is kind of like a brightness or luminance sort of increase or decrease in a very subtle way. But what's unique about the clarity method of uh, adding contrast is that I would liken it to applying the unsharp mask capability, um, or sorry, the unsharp mask tool, but with settings such that it applies contrast to the whole image. I'll cover it in greater detail in another video about sharpness, but essentially the unsharp mask does apply contrast, but just at edges. 
And so if you increase the radius extremely large, you can in effect create a contrast that affects the entire image. And I've done some empirical tests on my own and have found that the clarity tool is very much like what the unsharp mask, unsharp mask does in terms of applying contrast. Now, the opposite being the case, though, it seems to do, rather than removing contrast, when you slide the slider to the left, it almost kind of blurs and softens the image. Um, so that's a little bit different. It maybe is the opposite of what Unsharp Mask does if you, if you apply it in an inverse fashion. But uh, that's essentially what the Clarity tool does, and it has a very unique kind of contrast applied to it, as you can see. The last tool is the local tone mapping. And this one, you know, I mean, really where this capability stemmed from was in being able to map tones um, from a high dynamic range image uh, and being able to bring that much larger low dark to high bright values that can't fit into a standard JPEG or whatnot into uh, that kind of a range. But with having this tool in here, it really just kind of applies its own uh, contrast, very similar to the way that uh, Unsharp Mask does or the way that Clarify does, uh, but in a much more intense manner. And so this is definitely one that if you're looking just for that sort of gritty, you know, HDR-esque like effect, um, you can just very simply apply it using this tool given whatever settings you want to experiment with. So up to this point, I've been talking about contrast tools in a manner of always increasing contrast. Uh, it's absolutely a um, standard use case to take photos or manipulate photos in such a way that the contrast is decreased. But just keep in mind that not all of these tools can actually de decrease contrast. Like, for example, levels cannot decrease contrast. Um, the ones that can are the base ones, like curves and the histogram adjustment. The highlight midtone shadow uh, can in kind of a way, but if you look at the histogram, you'll notice that it doesn't fully um, bring the the lows up and the the highs down. That it, it there there's still some sort of um, algorithm applied that it maintains uh, values at the lowest end, but it, it can be done there. And the fill light um, clarify tool to some degree can also do it. But essentially, the takeaway is. All of the tools can increase contrast, only some can decrease it. So that's it for this one. I hope you've learned a little bit about contrast as it pertains to the tools in PaintShop Pro. As always, if you have any questions or ideas, leave a comment below. And if you want updates, uh, please subscribe and I'll see you guys next time.